This is going to be a look at some Justin Matabike film from 2021. Of course, he's going in, into his third season with the Ravens. There's high expectations for him, um, and I think he's capable of living up to those expectations. I know that some of the snap counts were down in certain games, but look, there's times where Justin Matabike as a three technique is absolutely dominating NFL guards, and I don't mean just one or two matchups in this season. Now, I've got I've got film from six different games here. I mean multiple teams. Here's the right guard for the Packers, number 70. Don't even know who he is. This is one of Matabike two sacks this year he's able to just supplant this guy move him backwards and he's being held you'll get the end zone angle to see confirm what I'm saying he's being held near the end of this play is able to finish the play he wins with his left hand typically wherever you win whichever hand side you win on that's where the hold's going to come from watch it the hold happens he's just able to sack Aaron Rodgers with one hand incredible physical strength very strong hips um, I love his feet I think he's able to move laterally on zone plays Gap schemes, people don't run at him. You'll see that later on in the video to understand what I'm talking about. I look for big things from him in 2022. I hope he gets his chance to be a starter and play. Here's his other sack. Multi three different hand engagements with that right guard for the Broncos. I think Matabike wins at least two of them. I like when he when he long arms someone at the end to frame them up and hold a gap. This is not a run play, obviously. He does get a sack there because Drew Locke goes down to the ground. Rushing from a three tech technique is not easy. Obviously, there's only certain guys that can do it. But the wider you line him up, the more push he's going to be able to get on an anchoring right guard. Most of these clips you'll see he's not as wide as he was just there. It was a pass rush situation, but he got some good push on the guard. Typically, he's going to be lined up in an absolute three here. Now, this is an RPO, not a typical pass rush situation. The Vikings, Broncos, and Steelers game one of the Steelers games, was the three where he was able to generate the most impact against the pass. Obviously, that's going to be the complaint against him. He's not a huge pass rush guy, um, even as a three technique. But he's great against the run, just great. Uh, this one's a huge hit on the quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, for the Broncos. Does a nice job defeating the left tackle. They got this like slide protection scheme with a pulling lineman is taken on, is responsible for Justin Houston, the edge defender, and Matabike gets a huge hit on Bridgewater. Against the Steelers, able to move the pocket a little bit, ball's thrown you know, too soon for him to get there. That's one of the things you want your three technique to do is just move people backwards sometimes and allow the edge rushers to be able to collapse the thing on the edges and, and, and constrict you know, the quarterback's ability to escape. Having said that, Justin Matabike clearly needs to develop some type of inside rip, a secondary move once his bull rush, his B-gap rush isn't working. Now, he's getting held here. I think that's quite obvious, and I did slow the video down, which makes it look worse. But that was obviously a hold. This one, there's no hold. He's on a B-gap rush, and to me, this looks like it should naturally turn into a secondary move, ripping with his inside arm, or his outside arm, excuse me, to the inside, trying to get to the quarterback because there's a huge lane, a huge gap there to fill, and this right guard has won, at least off the initial engagement. Now, having said all that, one area he does not need to improve on at all, just maintain his current level of absolute dominance, is run schemes at him, specifically zone schemes against the Packers later on in the season he just controls people he's able to two gap stuff look he's able to get his head into the gap where the where the right guard's trying to go this is two gap technique just beat the head and then once he sees the running back cut it back he's able to get his head back into the gap and make the tackle on the running back pretty much by himself he's a special he i would say he's damn near elite as a run defender on zone schemes at him I didn't see a whole lot of gap schemes at him against the Vikings. This is Patrick Queen's tackle for loss that people had a complaint about because, you know, Queen didn't, quote, finish the tackle. Play's really made by Matabike. Look at the push he gets on this O-lineman, pushing him back. Look at the penetration, the depth he's pushed that guy back to compared to the rest of the defensive line penetration or push. And that's Matabike moving horizontally and vertical at the same time. A zone scheme coming up against the Steelers. It looks like he loses to the inside. He does not. He slaps the left guard off of him and then jumps back inside. Now, he misses the tackle. Pretty, could have got called for a leg whip, if you ask me. I'm going to give you the all 22 so you can see it. We'll bring it back a couple of times so you can see him. Just basically evade this left guard and get penetration in the backfield. Penetration kills zone run plays to the front side, and Justin Matabike can do that. Nobody else on the Ravens roster can do this as consistently as he can. Calais Campbell is obviously very disruptive. Matabike can do this consistently. He's always going to turn the ball back to the inside. Here he was pushed out to a five technique by Josh Bynes, turns the ball to the inside, and as good as he is to the front side of zone schemes, he's even better on the back side. But I'm going to show you some film from Pop, probably his best game of the season against the Vikings. Not necessarily stat-wise because he didn't have a sack, but he just, he just dominated these guards for the Vikings, whether he was on the right or the left. 
and, and made it difficult. The ball always was turned back inside. Look how violent he is. Look at how the, the pad level that he's got. That's perfect. That's teaching tape right there in terms of pad level and standing someone up who obviously knew where the ball was going. The O-linemen know which direction the run play is going to go. Matabike doesn't. What it allows the inside linebackers to do is if it's, if it's run at Matabike, they know the ball's going to be turned inside. So I can wait for the cutback because it's going to happen. And if you think I'm overstating his impact, check out this play. He's not on the field. This is within that same time frame as the last two plays I just showed you against the Vikings. Matabike's not on the field. Campbell is. Washington is. Jelly Ellis is. Huge run by Dalvin Cook up the left sideline. Look, I tried to find plays where there was a zone scheme run at him, and, and we had difficulty with it, and a big play popped off. I couldn't find him. Let me know if you can. Two more plays here where he's a three technique, and they're running at him. Fantastic plays, both of them. He gets momentarily chipped by the center and the left guard here and is able to work off of them and then jump back inside and get involved in a tackle on who, you know, top five running back in the NFL and Jonathan Taylor, if you ask me. There's the center chipping up on him and moving up to the next level. Matabike has the hips and the strength and athleticism to be able to vert back inside. Somewhat similar play here. You're going to get a combo block by the right tackle and right guard on Matabike. And he's able to take this right guard, press him into the backfield. He doesn't make contact with the running back himself. He pushes the right guard's ass back into the, the, the running back. You know, now it does end up being a four-yard gain. I offer to you that if Matabike wasn't as good against double teams, it would have been a bigger gain than that. Zone run schemes at him would sound like it's his best skill, the thing that he's best at, based upon the film and the video breakdown I'm giving you so far. Uh, that's not the case. Zone run schemes away from him, he's just as damn good. He is. He's consistently able to react to the block and not get scooped by the backside guy. So in this case, the right guard's trying to chip him a little bit and let the right tackle take him over. It doesn't happen. Matabike is consistently able to get inside that gap. Of course, the gaps are moving. What it does is it allows the linebackers, again, to work off of him and understand the ball's going to be cut back off of him consistently. I think I'm going to show you four, four examples of this here. Here's one against the Vikings. Perfect example. You see he's able to stay in that gap. The gaps are moving, so it's not necessarily a double team. It's essentially a combo block. It's just a zone scheme. One guy's trying to work up to the second level, and Matabike is able to disrupt that. The way it's drawn up on paper, Matabike is able to split those guys essentially now, there's going to be a lot of trash here there's a lot of people in this little spot shadow that i give you but it's the same concept run play to the left matabike is able to split 51 and the other guy who's still holding on to him and then make the ball turn back around him now Dajay harris is a good, really good running back so he's able to redirect and bounce it back to the originally intended side two gap schemes that are away from him i could not uh, the browns are a big gap scheme team i could not find a gap scheme play at him in the browns game uh, do me a favor, help my content get better. Let, find one for me, and I'll do a one- or two-play breakdown on it. I think Justin Matabike is ready to explode for the Ravens. You know, if they go Jordan Davis at 14, which is possible, or, or trade back and get Devontae Wyatt or something like that, you know, is that going to impact his play in time? Maybe. Could impact him if Calais Campbell comes back? Maybe. You know, that's, that's, that's an issue as well. 36 tackles last year, seven tackles for loss. I think five QB hits, two sacks. I think Justin Matabike can improve on those numbers this year. I think he's going to be a better player, number one. Number two, I think he's going to be more experienced. His lateral quickness and ability to retain strength on these zone concepts. I hope I've made it clear to you guys how good he is at it. What I need to do is sit down and look at some other players, maybe across the league, and compare them to Justin Matabike so we can see clearly how good he actually is because I think he should be a starter in 2022.